Social behavior is all around us. It shapes our lives in simple ways and in important ways. I'm Chuck Wico, and in this series, we're going to introduce SockProg, a popular tool for analyzing social data. In previous videos, we downloaded SockProg and loaded data. In this video, we're going to calculate association rates for social data. To do this, we will set sampling periods for the data, select the variable that defines an association, and set restrictions. Then, we'll analyze the data. First, we quickly load our data. Then, we can click the button labeled Set Sampling Period Association Restrictions. This opens a new screen that lets us perform these three functions. There are four buttons in the upper right-hand portion of the window. If we push Raw Data, nothing seems to happen. But remember, there's a command window that opened at the same time that the SockProg master screen opened. If we bring up the command window, we can see that the raw data appeared here. If we scroll to the top of the data, we see that there's a title indicating the data file's name and that this data is unrestricted. Personally, I like to make the command window as wide as possible so that the output is easy to read. And I like the master screen to be to the left, with the set screen to the right. The reason that I do this is because when you perform a function in SogProg that sends output to the command window, the command window doesn't automatically pop up. With this configuration, when results are output, they're easy to see. If we go back to the set screen and press the restrict button, we get another set of output in the command window. We haven't set any restrictions yet. So the data that appears in the window is exactly the same as the unrestricted data we saw a moment ago. But notice that the title for this data says restricted. In a moment, when we start placing restrictions, this title will be useful to keep in mind. The summary gives us the same summary information that we saw when we were loading the data. We're not going to use the Save button right now. But once we have set everything up in this screen, you can save your data along with your settings so that you can pick up where you left off. In the upper left-hand portion of the window, we have lists of the data fields for the primary and secondary data. Notice that some of the field names have parentheses S beside them. This means that they're recorded as strings. Not having a parentheses S means that the field is numeric. We're going to use these lists to fill in the information for this window. The first thing we need to do is set the sampling period. The sampling period is the period of time within which associations are examined. The data field that you select has to be numeric, and it has to come from the list of primary data fields. Notice that day is the default setting for sampling period. This is a common approach because it's often assumed that observations taken on different days are independent of each other. One of the best ways to think about this is by considering the way bats roost. There is evidence that bats make the decision of where to roost based off of social preferences. Every morning after feeding, Individual bats choose a new, possibly different, roost. So, observations taken on different days have given the bats a chance to change their roost and the bats that they roost with. Just to show how to edit the sampling period, suppose we wanted the sampling period to be the hour. Notice the little s to the right of the sampling period. Don't confuse this little s with the s in parentheses. They don't have anything to do with each other. When we click on the little s, SockProg writes the data field name that we selected into the sampling period expression field. But notice that it doesn't delete what was there previously. We have to do that ourselves. When we click set, the sampling period becomes hour. Resetting the sampling period is simply a matter of repeating these steps. Now, if we select summary, we can see that we have two new fields. Those are sample and numsamp. Sample gives us the values of the sampling periods. Numsamp is the number of samples that include at least one individual. If we look at the raw data, we can see that there is a new field called sample associated with each record, indicating which sample the record belongs to. This is a good way to check that SockProg is handling your sampling periods the way you expected. While we're here, notice that individual 19 is the last record in our data. 
In a moment, we're going to set a restriction that removes this individual. You can use the editable string window to enter a mathematical expression for sampling period. If you're interested in doing this, I recommend reading the details in the SOCPROG manual. Personally, whenever I want sampling periods that are not naturally in the data, I add them to the data set before I load the data. Let's jump down to handle restrictions next. You might want to restrict your analysis to certain subsets of your data. SOGPROG lets you define these subsets using restrictions. You can base your restrictions on either primary or secondary data field. Suppose we want to only examine associations that occur at a specific place, say place A. Type in the MATLAB code to make comparisons of strings. And now, look at the restricted data by selecting the Restricted button. You can see that now we only have observations where place is A. If we want to take this a bit further, we can restrict our analysis to individuals who have an age greater than 10. And you can see that individual 19 has been removed from the data set. Again, personally, I prefer to partition my data into the files I want to analyze before I load them into SOGPROG, but that's more about me having control than a limitation on SOGPROG. Now we get to the really important step of defining an association. For now, I'm going to assume that you're familiar with association indices, and I'll just walk you through the mechanics of using SOGPROG. If you want to learn more about selecting association indices, see my video on them. In the drop-down menu for defining an association, you have four choices. You can define association as being in the same group using a group variable. This is by far the most popular technique. You can use minimum difference in attribute. One example of where this might be useful is if you are observing birds roosting along a branch or wire, and your data contains their order in line. You might treat order as your attribute and only consider individuals associated if they're close to one another in the line. More complex is where you can load your own association rules. We're not going to demonstrate this capability here because it requires that you've written the rule in MATLAB code. But if you're interested, the SOGPROG manual has an appendix on using this option. The last option is distance-based association. This is for situations where you have location data about the individuals. If you're interested in this option, see my video on movement analysis. Instead, we'll go back to define association by a group variable. Remember that when we converted our data from group to line format, the data field line was added to indicate the line in the original file that the record came from. Thus, using line as the variable that indicates the group is the correct thing to do. If you wanted to change it, you could do the same thing that we've been doing all along to make changes. Now, you have three options for association type. The first is grouped in sampling period. This treats association as a binary event. Either a pair of individuals is associated during the sampling period or they're not. That is, if they appear in a single group at any point during the sampling period, they are associated. And the only way they are not associated is if they never appear in a group together during the sampling period. The second option is number of groups in a sampling period. This counts the number of times that a pair is observed in the same group during the sampling period. This approach may be appropriate if observations are independent during the sampling period. The last option is weighted by. This is similar to the previous option, but instead of counting every group as equivalent, it lets you weight different kinds of groups differently. One common way that this gets used is to weight a group based on its duration. For now, we're going to use a group variable of line and use grouped in sampling period. The next step is to analyze the associations. This opens a window that gives us the choice between analyzing associations or interactions. Let's click on interactions just to see what happens. As you can see, we get a warning box because we're working with data that is currently stored in linear mode. Therefore, SOCPROG can't analyze the interactions. Remember that this data set was originally in group mode and that we converted it to linear mode. If our ultimate goal had been to perform interaction analysis, we should not have chosen to transform the data. But okay, let's do this again and opt for associations. This opens a dialog box where we can select the specific association index that we're going to use. 
Again, I'm going to assume that you know which index is appropriate for you to use with your data, but if you want to learn more, see my video on association indices. Let's use the half weight index in this example. At the bottom of this window, you have two options. For this basic tutorial, you can ignore them, but don't check the standardized for gregariousness box or click on the general affiliation index without reading the manual and the journal articles associated with these two techniques. When we click set, another window appears. In the next video, we'll work our way through this window. For now, we just want to see our results, so we click the list association matrix button. Since we're using the compiled version of SOCPROG, the results appear in the command window. And here we go, we have the association matrix. This is the first step in studying our behavioral data. And from here on out, we're going to use this result to perform our analysis. If you want to learn more about analyzing associations, I recommend Hal Whitehead's book, Analyzing Animal Societies.